Well, tomorrow we head back home, my wife and me. And we enjoyed being here last Sabbath and this Sabbath. And we have wonderfully enjoyed your country. So I want to end this evening by telling you something that I believe will be very beneficial to your future. Before I go to the Bible, I want you to bow your heads with me. Before I talk to you, let's pray. Okay. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity. And we ask as I spend this time that these precious hearts would be encouraged. And so, Lord, send your Holy Spirit to speak through me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody will be young at one point. So what I want to do this evening is walk you through a story in the Bible that I believe is one of the most telling about how every one of us can find victory. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, these are the words that the Apostle Paul told to Timothy. Listen to what he said. He said, let no one despise your youth. But be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Notice he said, let no one despise your youth. Now, to me, most of your youth. I'm not talking to the parents. I'm talking to the young people. If you're young, raise your hand. Ah, good. And I'm also talking to the young at heart. If you're young at heart, raise your hand. <laughs> but I want you to notice what Paul says to Timothy. He said, let no one despise your youth. In other words, he says, let no one say that because you are youth, you are no good. Because a lot of times people think that young people are of no value. They often blame young people for so many things that are wrong. But Paul is saying to Timothy, young people could live a good life. He is saying to Timothy, young people can make good choices. He is saying that you don't have to wait till you get old to decide to live right. Because when Jesus comes, somebody is going to be young. And if he comes in your generation and you're young, I know you want to be ready. Amen. Amen. We want to be ready at all times. 
And so we're going to walk through a story in the Bible that shows you that being young doesn't mean that you have to be a failure. Because the world you live in today is quite different than the world that I was raised in. I didn't have cell phones when I was being raised. Do you know what a cell phone is? Cell phones are tijabare. Do you have one? Shijala. Raise up your cell phones if you have one. Cell phone shin. Oh, everybody, raise your cell phone if you have one. Ah, cell phone guru thang pia ba de shin. That's not a bad thing. Just show me your cell phone if you have one. Ah, guru guru shin thang pia ba de cell phone. I'm not going to embarrass you. Just show me your cell phone. Get thang pia ba o. Ba ma ma pio ba o ma su ba o de. Now the reason I'm saying that you have a cell phone is because the world is always communicating with you. You cannot get away from communication. While you're sitting here, you have friends on Facebook trying to communicate with you. And sometimes you try to communicate with them. So we live in a world that wants to get your attention all the time. That's why cell phones are called smart devices. Now listen to this. We have to be smarter than our devices. Amen? We have to be smarter than our phones. Because the world we live in today wants to keep you connected. And often you're not connected to good things. But notice 1 Timothy 4, verse 12 again. Look at it. These are all the areas that Paul says young people can be a powerful example. Notice what he says. He says, be an example to the believers in word. That means young people can use their voices for good things. And when he says be an example in word, he means when you say yes, mean yes. When you say no, mean no. He is saying that young people could be honest. I heard a story about a king that had a castle. And I want to tell you that story in just a minute. Notice he said, not only in word, but in conduct. You know what conduct is? He said, be an example in the way you live. Okay, That means when people look at your life, they need to see that you are an example of living a good life. He said, not only in the way you live, but also be an example in love. And the word that is used here, love, means, that means phileo. That's in the Greek. It means phileo. Just say that. Phileon. Phileo. That's the Greek word, which means brotherly love, which means when you come to church, you should express the love of God to one another. He also says you could be an example in spirit. Listen carefully. In Another word for spirit means attitude. That means when people look at you, they should see joy, love, peace, gentleness, 
আর লু রে তিন গু চিলাই রেখা মাসু রু সে চেমি তারি হিন দা চিনি কুই মিয়া মাপি เอ่อคิมยารุกาจนอลุปุงซามิบินเฮาชิเลเรสยูร์แฮนด์อีฟยูไลค์มีนพีเปิลเรสยูร์แฮนด์จนอกูไจ่เดซูรุชินนิตเ
And when all the people came to the castle, they stood before the king. And some had plants like that. And like that. And like that. And then the king looked at Johnny and said, Where is your plant? And Johnny didn't have a plant. For three months, nothing grew. And the king looked at all the people and he said, I'm going to give Johnny this position. And and the people said, why? He doesn't have a plant. And the king said, he's the only honest one. And they said, why is he honest? Because the king said, three months ago, I gave every one of you a seed. But there was nothing in the seed. The The seed was empty. So he said, nothing should have grown. And all the people that had plants began to walk away. He said, you all are dishonest. And they lowered their head and began to walk away. And then he says, Johnny, you are the only honest one. Johnny, and he put a robe and a crown on Johnny. And he said, Johnny, you will be with me in my kingdom. And Johnny was happy. Let me see a smile, Johnny. Let me see a happy smile. Yeah. yeah, a bigger break, a bigger break. <laughs> Johnny was very happy. And boys and girls, when Paul the Apostle said, be an example. And let no one despise your youth. That's what he meant. You may be seated, Johnny. Johnny was young. But he was honest. He was an example. He was truthful. And he held on to the seed the king gave to him. So as you get older, you're going to be placed in positions where you're going to be tested. And look at this text one more time. You have your Bibles open to 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. Notice what it says. It says, Let no one despise your youth. But, but be an example to believers. Um, okay. In word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Amen. The Lord wants all of you as young people to be an example. This society is going to call you. As we traveled around Myanmar, we saw lots of gods. But it's not only the gods that are on the hills and in the castles and in the, in the pagodas. When you are a Christian, those gods are not a threat to you. When you are a Christian, you don't have to worry about those gods. But there are other gods that are calling you. The gods of money and fame and fortune. 
The gods of entertainment and of the world are calling you. And only as you respond to the true God will you be able to show other people the true love of Christ. Let me tell you a little story as I wind up. Last Sabbath, I gave you just a small bit of my life story. When I was three months old, my mother left me at a babysitter. And she walked away and I did not know who she was. I was raised by a Christian lady who was a Seventh-day Adventist. And she taught me in the ways of the Lord. When I was 12 years old, she died. And I went out into the world. I got involved in music. And dancing and clubs and partying and gambling. And my, my life as a youth began to go downhill. But God still had a plan for my life. And even though I made a wrong turn, he called me back. My wife and I met when we were 16 years old. And the Lord used her to bring me back. And here's the commitment that she made. So I'm going to tell the young ladies this right now. She decided she did not want anyone that did not love the Lord that she loved. She kept on working on my heart until I gave my life to the Lord. So young ladies, if you meet someone that's wanting to pull you away from God, take your stand and don't compromise. Be an example as a young person. Young men, let me also talk to you. The world is going to try to call you away. It's going to try to lead you down a wrong path. But make up your mind to follow the Lord. And you might ask, how do you do that? How do you follow the Lord? Every day you have to read your Bible. If you don't read your Bible, you won't hear God's voice. Every day you must pray. When you pray, you speak to your God. If you don't study your Bible and you don't pray on a daily basis, you don't have a connection with God. Now watch, watch this. You'll either, you'll either have a connection with God that's strong or this connection will pull you away. Here. A cell phone could be used for a good thing or a bad thing. But the Bible could never be used for a bad thing. It's God's book. So even though you have a cell phone, watch me, are you ready? 
If you carry a Bible like this to church, you'll never be tempted with your cell phone. Cell phone she to me alive. Dilu chance a gule you to abar. The cell phone ga kimi ago lam na ushe dobu. Do you know why? Bajao ne suroti la. Facebook. Di cha maro Facebook di shire. Face the book. Da ushe ro. Di sa guro yin sa inlay ba. Facebook. Face the book. Na. Di be ro kimi ago ti ba na. Texting. Okay, can you read a text message to Puni Mesa? Reading a text. Dear text, go palai ba. Dear sada, go palai ba. Amen. Amen. The voice of your friends. Can you hear the genie at that way? The voice of your God. Can you hear the genie at that? You get it? Yeah, I know. They will change. Your friends will change. Can you hear the genie? Can you hear the genie? Can you hear? But your Lord will never change. Amen. Amen. So let me encourage you. There's so much more I could say, but let me encourage you to make wise choices. Because the more you read God's word, the more you get to know Him. And the only reason why you will be lost is this. If you don't know the Lord. Now let me say that again. I didn't say if you don't know doctrines. I said if you don't know the Lord. It's important to know what you believe. But there's only one more thing more important than what you believe. It is who you know. So while you're learning the truth, and you're getting to know the teachings of this church, get to know Jesus as your personal Savior. That'll be your only strength. And so we leave tomorrow. And we've come to encourage you. To encourage you. You may forget our names. And you have lost nothing. But if you forget Jesus, you've lost everything. So my, my prayer, my prayer is that you will love Jesus more. But I want to sing a couple of songs for you. Can I do that? Can I sing two songs for you? Okay, I'll sing two songs. I've had many tears and sorrows. I have had questions for tomorrow. There were times that I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation. That my trials come to only make me strong. I've been a lot of places, and I've seen so many faces. But there were times that I felt so all alone. But in that lonely hour, yes, that precious lonely hour. Jesus let me know that I was His own. That's the reason I say that through it all, do you know the song? Through it all, oh, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God, and it's been through it all. upon His Word. 
So now I thank God for the mountains And I thank Him for the valley Thank Him for all the storms He brought me through Cause if I never had a problem I'd never know that He could solve them Never know what faith in His Word can do That's the reason I say that through it all Yes, through it all Oh, I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God And it's been through it all Yes, through it all Oh, I've learned to depend upon His Word That's the reason I'm standing through it all Yes, through it all Oh, I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God And it's been through it all Yes, through it all Oh, I've learned to depend upon His Word Yes, I've learned to depend upon God's Word. Yes, I've learned to depend upon God's